We are in Tonga. Nukualo for the capital. I stole as a kid. We used to steal tape decks when I was eight. Then um, uh, we moved to Hawaii with my mom. I was about at 11 or 12. This kid used to pick on me every day. So the Monday I hit the corner, got high with the Filipinos. Started drinking a little bit, came around at the cafeteria. There he was. Fucking shot him four times in the stomach. And that's where it all began. <laughs> got arrested um, since I was a juvenile. They tried to give me life, but I ended up going off with four years. By that time, they were telling me I was getting deported. I was like, OK, yeah, only Mexicans get deported. They're like, yeah, no, you get deported too. I was like, huh? I had people tell me they're scared of me, and they don't even know who I am. And I'm like, why are you scared? They said, because you're a deportee. I'd say half of my life I regret just the dumb shit I was doing. That was my understanding as a kid. I get beat by my dad, I'm going to come and dish it out on somebody else. You know? Because my dad was God, huh? at least to me. He was God, and since I couldn't fight God, I'd fight everybody else. <laughs> I was born in Australia, 86. Came here in, in the 90s, 1990. I was just started kindy. But I remember coming back. Yeah, it was all foreign. Like, I, I wasn't used to anything. We were here for seven, eight years. Then we migrated to New Zealand. We, we went and stayed, there's like gangs all around me. Maybe it could have been different. I served three years in jail. They yeah, I didn't even get out. I just, they just deported me from jail. The whole buzz of coming back was never about coming back. It was more about me getting to see my family, yeah? and then my wife, my kid. I came with the police, with, um, so I had an escort. It's a shameful ordeal, man. Like, and you gotta walk through the whole terminal. Everyone's looking and you're walking through here with handcuffs. <laughs> Cause you'll be the first one that goes in with the police officer and then you guys will walk, go sit at the back. Once you go through the bit where you, you have your passport, yeah, the police goes. Cause you're already in song. There's no way you can get back out. It took a while, eh? like accepting the case for what it was. My victim is never going to be able to work again. Like, knowing inside they hit this guy on purpose, smashed him up against the wall. Before I went in, I was uh, just denial. Like, it's surprisingly, uh, being honest, like, sometimes uh, um, it's bad at the start, you know? But then you think about how free you feel. It brings this feeling. Once you let it all out, then you don't have this like cloud hanging over you. I don't want to like make excuses for what I what I did. You know, it is what it is. I did it. Yeah, I accept it. You know, but at the same time, I, I, I feel like I did my punishment. I've been here six years, and I still feel like home is back home, like a kiwi. I'm past all that bullshit, all that stuff you go through when you're between the age of 14 and 21. Like you know. All you want to do is show how hard you are, you know? be the bad guy. And really, it's all nonsense, you know? My hope is that, that nothing passes on from me to my kids, you know? This punishment, just let it be me. It ain't a place to live when you're barely making ends meet, you know? It's like crabs being stuck in a bucket. It's, <laughs> it's scratching, trying to get up. Everything here is edible. In Tonga, it's real funny because you can, you can take a stick, you can chop a stick off anything, and you can stick it in the ground, and it'll grow. It'll grow. 
16 acres is a lot of land. I'm fortunate that my father left us this. When I first came home here, I didn't have no money. I didn't have nothing. I had that little uh, passport piece of paper. So I didn't even have no bus fare. So I walked all the way from the airport to town to see my mom. She was still alive at the time. So basically that was the, the only thing on my mind to see my mom, because my dad passed away while I, was, while I was incarcerated. Usually I have a machete, but I didn't bring my machete because I didn't want to carry it down here on Sunday. You know, you come down with your machete and your, matter of fact, if I rode my bike back and all the, my neighbors, they look at me, they frown on me. Like I grew up in America, so Sunday is just another day. I didn't realize how different I was until I got deported. I thought I was just your typical Tonga growing up overseas, but uh, I left when I was four, so I didn't uh, know a lot about my Tongan culture, just what my parents taught me. So when I got to America, we moved to Los Angeles, which is really the worst place to start a family. It, it, it was a hard transition because all the bad things you can do in the city, I did that. I have a record probably this big since I was nine years old. Joined the gangs and uh, sold drugs and uh, stole cars, you know, all the bad things. The hardest part of the deportees, what happens when they first get here is the transition back into Tongan society. We're judged before they even get to know us. We have a red X against us. Nobody wants to hire us for work because they think we're gonna steal something, do something bad. You don't have the things you have in America, the necessities, the vehicles, the money, the good clothes, the, the nice apartment and stuff like that. I think when you're brought down to your bare essentials, that's, that's the character that you are. That's the person you are when you have nothing from rock bottom. I'm Daria Uri Prescott. And I'm a motherfucking gangster. Yeah. yeah. I got exposed to the, the, to the gang when I was like 13. I was with, um, with um, Aina. Yeah, in conference. Yeah. It's a Samoan word for family, eh? Mm. When you don't have your own, they give you one, eh? And when you have your own, they support that one. Yeah. They indefinite banned me from New Zealand. Mm. It was very sad mm. not to enter New Zealand. Because yeah. that's the only world I know, eh? I've been here for a month, nine days. Eh? My whole world used to be like this. Now it's all come like that, and it's just me. And that's the only king I need. Just reflections, uh, just about life in general, like things I fucked up in, and you know, I can just kind of zone out on that. Think about my family, my kids, my siblings. Friends that passed away. Yeah. Things I can't change, you know. This is uh, right here is kumbala. But this is they're like little potatoes or something. But then um, I got a. I was doing vanilla for a while. So it's the oldest boy. He's the heir. I'm not the oldest in my family. But nobody else is here. So therefore, I, you know, I'm the boss. And that's my older brother decides to come, which he, he probably won't. He'll probably end up getting killed in Mexico. I told him to come back here. He didn't want to. But it was, it's, a, it's a hassle, too, with my uncles. It took me a while for them to get off the land. Uh, they said, like, you're deported. You don't know how to do this. Just trying to do it the nice way. Like, come on, guys. Leave me alone. I don't eat in your fucking kitchen. Don't come and eat in mine. <laughs> So right now, yeah, it's me now. Awesome, 18 great fucking acres. 
Sometimes it scares the shit out of me, you know, waking up and I'm thinking, where the fuck am I? Who's out here? You know, come outside, creeping outside like, fuck, oh man, I'm in, I'm in my house. Takes a couple seconds to get used to it. I was quite lucky to, to, to have that job because when we get sent back to Tonga, we don't have a job and they're ready for us, eh? They don't prepare us for, for this kind of new surrounding, eh? Our new environment. Because as you can see, the, the Tongan people are very proud people, eh? And you can stop, uh, stick out like a sore thumb when you're one of the deportees, eh? You gotta start your life all over again, eh? It's pretty hard, man, straight up. Make me wanna go back doing drugs again. <laughs> I used to do organized crime, man. I went to jail for guns and um, violence, eh? I know damn well who's around you sort of, you know, will make you who you, you know, really are. Like, the people around me are like the directors of my life at the moment. So what they do, I gotta go and do that. I used to have heaps of people around me, but I think they were all just for themselves, or one certain few they were like, really do for me, but when it comes to the important stuff in life, it's where they're now, so to speak, eh? And I don't want to leave my legacy eh, as a guy that was a gangster and got deported to Tonga. And that's it, end of his life, sort of thing, eh? A coconut a day in Tonga is like an apple, an apple a day. Yes. Keeps the doctor away. Oh yeah, that's great. This house here was built by my grandfather, and it's all pegged in, and it's all made by hand. So I'm, I'm fortunate, like, like you said, because most of the deportees that come here, they have to pay rent, or they're, they're pretty much homeless. They have to live with somebody else. Oh, here's my pig. Yeah, her name is May. She's, she's camera shy, so <laughs> I can actually pet her, yeah. And that's rare, because a lot of the pigs here, they can't do this to their pigs. So a lot of the neighbors, they, they kind of envy me when they see me petting my big old pig. I didn't never think I was gonna live to be 30. And, and then I got incarcerated at 29. So pretty much that like uh, stopped that, that thought, you know, that I had in my head. And it, it enabled me to be 44 and get deported to Tonga. It's rough, but uh, one thing good about prison is that if you get out alive, it, it gives you a different perspective in life. You really learn to appreciate it and don't take things for granted. Never take things for granted, yeah. Many more deportees are getting deported this year, next year, the worst of the worst, because uh, Donald Trump is trying to get rid of them, you know? And uh, those are the guys that I feel like that when they get here, they should have something that they can get involved in real quick. If not, they're gonna become their own selves again and end up back in prison or, or making Tonga worse. Mess is a big problem here in Tonga now. Tonga's been a, a land that they've been, drugs been coming through since the 70s. It's, it's, it's nothing new. It's easy for a lot of deportees to get involved in that too, because when deportees first get here, they don't think there's so many drugs like that in Tonga. They think it's all, the only thing here is marijuana. And then they're surprised when they get here, they have all the other drugs that you can have in the States, they have it here in Tonga. If you were to smoke this right here, 
you probably sit here talking to me about anything and everything. Last story in 30 seconds. This kid's called Less. Then a week from that, they may hold up ice blocks. They would say, do you have any polaca? It's still the same thing. And right now, they call it Puff. On a Sunday, I'll sell to about close to 200 people. From 5 until midnight, easy 5 grand. It's a fucking easy 5 grand. I don't feel guilty about dealing drugs. Not at all. Man is not racist. Neither am I. He has no feelings. Neither do I. It's a fair exchange for me. You get what you want. I get what I want. If you're in love with drugs, I'm your best friend. You know, I'm the first commissioner of the Tonga prisons. Previously, they, they, they called the superintendent of prisons. A lot of uh, deputies while I, I was uh, working in the prisons. Uh, some from um, the States, also New Zealand, and also Australia. When he came over straight away, he, uh, no hope, you know, they'd serve, no families. You know, how do we survive? You know, the uh, Tongan people is um, far different from the um, people coming overseas. How did they, 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 they conduct the doing of doing crimes? For example, the um, doing of robbery. They use guns and so forth, you know. It's very rarely before, it's really rarely before here in, um, in Tonga. But now, every week that we had news, there's, there, there's a, a, a robbery, a robbery, a robbery. And I think that's, that's what they learn from the deportees. The system used by the foreign countries of how they deport should be amended. They have to, to, to inform us properly so they help us in looking after that, that guy, you know. I think that they, they, they don't can concern much about the, uh, he is a human being. He is a human being. It seemed simply like a rubbish, you know, tumbling the, uh, everywhere, you know. Tumbling to Tonga, tumbling to Samoa, and tumbling to Fiji. And I think that uh, the rules and the regulations should, should be amended. Yeah, it's a terrible habit, eh? To have our flag <clears throat> and our seal. One thing about deportation, it, have, it has this lot of effect on you, eh? But I think if you look at it in a positive way, it does unwrap a new path for you. Yeah, just my, all my photos and that from jail, poetry and all my guns. And, Getting a bit emotional because it's a big part of my life. I guess I gotta just fold it up and press on on this journey. Life is, is moving forward, eh? It's a feeling that I had when I first got my driving license and my ID. Because eh? I never have ID, you know, ever. You know, I was just running wild. I used to love it, you know, being a bad guy. But now I wanna be a good guy. <laughs> Been here for about six years. I'll probably see my family, not even a year. Like, out of those six years, had a talk with my wife. She's not feeling it anymore, you know, coming back and forth. She's had enough. There's no promising, like, saying that I'll go back. And she don't want to live here. So 
I mean, we ain't gonna keep trying if it's not gonna work. It's gonna be hard trying to explain, like, especially my older son. Eh? Yeah, he knows the full story. I don't lie to him. Like, I tell him what happened. I did a crime, I did something bad. I went to jail, served my time, but this is what the New Zealand government wants. They want me back here. And he doesn't get it. I see, nah. When you grow up, you understand that there's laws and you abide by them or goes into other people's hands. My options are wide open if I go back, you know? Not limited like over here. I want to be a um, social worker. When I was in jail, I've did, I done this little course, right? It was um, like a drug treatment unit course. They asked me to stay back, stay back in the course and um, be a mentor. Eh? I ended up staying there throughout the rest of my, um, my term being in jail. The first thing they tell you is just to tell the truth. Like, if you lie about anything, is it'll show. And the, and the course won't work if you lie. Like, if you just tell the truth, everything will just work out. People see me, they think that they, um, they're just what I want. I don't know. My youngest son is almost four. Yeah, that's real hard, you know? I hate that I can't be with them. You don't know that feeling until you have kids. Yeah, this is where I grew up as a kid, eh? That shop over there was there when I was a little wee boy and still owned by the same family, eh? Hello, my lord. Yo. So this is a piece of land that my brother's gonna give me, eh? I don't feel like a gangster here. It's mum and dad grew up here, so. When I come here, I sort of dream, you know? I see like three bedrooms plus upstairs. Yeah. So a little bit of work to do, but I think it's like three to five years plan. Yeah. I think my patch and they're all hanging in the road. When I come here, I'm like, me. But this is home, eh? Yeah, you know, in my feet. Granddad, eh? This is where I'll be. <laughs> yeah, get you ported to this, eh? Yeah, get you ported to this. This is me now, man. <laughs> 